Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to be back with you all. Uh, glad you could join us today. Here I am with my partner, John Coleman, and our favorite philosopher, Bill Jordan. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. Now, again, I'm just so, uh, I guess I'm just humbled and honored that you would reference me as a philosopher. I never would have, you know, I, I, back in the day it was like philosophy. Why would I ever be interested in philosophy? And now I just love it. It's just, it's learning how to live life. I just started learning a little too late. That's all. You, Bill, you do recognize <laughs> that the check you sent me has cleared the bank. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Where you said, please refer to me as a philosopher. Okay, we're, we're even steep. Okay. okay <laughs> That's our, yeah, our secret. Hmm. Hey, Bill. Um, the other day, I was uh, scanning through um, YouTube and came across a bunch of videos about the making of uh, the behind the scenes of Princess Bride, one of my favorite movies. Love, Absolutely. just love yes. that movie. Yes. And. Um, the, the cast were telling stories about each other in the making of the movie. And they, as they did that, of course, they were very well done. They had clips of the movie, all those great scenes, all the romantic scenes and all the fighting scenes and all the humorous scenes. It was a, a movie that had just about everything. And uh, I found myself crying at all of those things, not only the romance, but the, the, the way they fought and the humor, you know, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Professor, die! You know, and yeah. and uh, inconceivable. Right. <laughs> but it, it what amazed me was I don't remember crying at that movie when it was new. I remember being fascinated by it, loving it. But maybe I did cry. Maybe I I did cry. I'm certainly crying at it now when I see see it. And yeah. and I'm amazed that. A movie like that, an action movie, really is what I categorize it as, would make me cry. You know, I think as we get older, and I don't know what the, you know, I've read it from various places, like starting at the age of 30, guys lose 8% of testosterone every year. So <laughs> some, something like that. So uh, if we are down, you know, 30 plus percent of testosterone, I don't know if it's replaced with estrogen, but I think we do become a little more sensitive and emotional as we get older. Um, and I think also the lens through which we look at movies and old TV shows and stuff, I think our lens changes also as we get older. And a case in point for that, just kind of like what you're talking about with The Princess Bride. And by the way, in that movie, what puts the lump in my throat is when he says, as you wish. And that oh, yeah. was his way of saying, I love you. Yeah. As you wish, whatever she wanted, as you wish. Yeah. So for me, I mean, my wife and I were watching, uh, we hadn't seen it. Maybe we'd seen it once since we had originally seen it on the big screen, 1981's On Golden Pond. Oh, yeah. We watched yeah. it on Amazon Prime or Netflix, whatever it was on, and it really impacted me. And I realized it was impacting me differently. And that when I saw it when I was 26, 27 years old, when it came out on the big screen, we identified with Dabney Coleman and Jane Fonda. Now I'm looking at it through the lens of identifying with Henry Fonda and Katherine Hepburn. I'm not quite their age in this movie, but I see it now as a perspective from them, not as the younger people, and also having a grandson. Sure, I, sure. I, I, so, yeah, I mean, I totally get that, that we see movies now differently. Um, I think, obviously, there's nothing wrong with emotion. I think our emotions it is part of what makes us makes us human. There was a time I would have never told you that I cried in a movie. Are you kidding? I, I don't cry at movies. The only time I cried at a movie was when I put my arm around my date and I left it there for two hours and I couldn't feel it at the end. Of it. And that was <laughs> the first time I ever cried at the movie. So, uh, but now, I mean... There's two Kevin Costner movies that make me cry every time. Of course, Field of Dreams. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, and that, again, changed perspective. In when I first saw it, I was totally Kevin Costner's character throwing baseball with my dad yeah. and throwing baseball with my dad. Now I look at it, and I see it that way, but I also see it as the dad playing catch with my daughter or my grandson. 
Yeah. And it's even more powerful. The other Kevin Costner movie that gets me every time is Dances with Wolves. When he and uh, Stands with a Fist are riding off in the snow and what was it? Uh, what was the guy's name? The Indian Native American wind in his hair is up on the rock saying, can't you see that you are my friend? And I'm just, I'm almost losing it now. That's such a powerful scene. Uh, Brian Song, it was an old TV movie. I don't know if it was ever on the big screen. Uh, James Caan. No, I and, think that was, made, that was made for TV. And, and Billy yeah. Dean, uh, Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers. Yeah. That, that movie, just any guy. Private Ryan. Oh, yeah. Private yeah, sure. Ryan. Yeah, I think, I think particularly private, uh, on Private Ryan, when um, uh, uh, the thing that really becomes emotional is that with, with uh, the Tom Hanks character, when he finally dies at the bridge, okay, and makes yeah. the ultimate sacrifice to, to bring this one of four sons home, uh, played by Matt da uh, Damon. Well, not, is not, that, that, that's not, an emotional highlight that I think has to get to just about anybody. Sure. Yeah. Not, not only that, but, you know, the next, the actual final scene, when Private Ryan himself flashes forward and he's at Arlington National Cemetery and he's standing over mm. character played by Tom Hanks over his mm. gravesite and turning to his wife and, you know, tell me I've been a good man. You know, that I've lived a good life. Well, and he you know, talks, it, it, talks to the gravesite. It, it, it's often... Uh, thought that men don't cry at movies, and yet um, emotion, which you're pointing out, is built into every good movie, one way or the other, whether it's a, a romance or an action movie. And I think of some of the more modern movies, um, the Marvel heroic uh, uh, action hero movies, um, they always build in, because they're you know a team of uh, superheroes, they always build in that moment where we're going into battle and we're all together and we we don't know if we're going to make it and we're going to save the world. That's a great emotional movement, uh, moment for, particularly for men, playing to the male emotion. But I think what uh, we should do is we should we should leave all of our male uh, counterparts out there and our tough as nail uh, a, a, a female audience uh, with permission. Uh, if you feel the emotion, let it go. Uh, to me, my guiding uh, uh, um, a song on this is It's All Right to Cry by Rosie Greer. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, it was, yeah. uh, uh, I got uh, it. he sang it to kids. I think actually the first time it was on was on a Sesame Street uh, and uh, telling a little kid that it's, o it's okay to cry from this big hulking football player. Uh, so yeah. uh, we, we hereby grant you permission to tear up and cry, uh, and uh, feel good about it that you ha that you actually have an emotion. You're not a piece of wood. That's it. You're human. Mm. All Sorry. right, and I want to leave. I want to leave everybody with one question. Uh, I hope everybody will uh, uh, join me in trying to come up with a name for those movies that make men cry. Uh, and this name for this category of movie will be the counterpart to Chick Flicks. Right. So Interesting. Okay. What do we call them? That's for next time. Uh, I'm going to have to ponder that. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.